Joel Berkeley will start from pole alongside Nathan McDonald in the Lindmark Automotive number 32. Kent Menzies to start from three alongside Mason Cameron. His brother Jack Cameron will start from five alongside Tim Atkin in the number 23 for Jeff and Beck Smith. The number 42 of Freddie Scott, Rockhampton. You've got three hard charges in the front four rows. He will start from position seven. Darren Severs from Mackay will start eight. Adam Jorgensen in the T25 Cortina will start from position number nine alongside Andrew Roberts. Starting position 11 will be Miles Gilroy from Mackay. In 12th will be Brad Stein in the South Burnett number six. Tangles, David Head will start from position number 13. 14 will be Brady Roberts. 15, Jeff Ull. Graham Kleinhans, Kevin Young and Richardson. Rounding out your ripper field, $2,000 on the line. Thanks to NRG Industrial. Righto, Rocky, count the numbers, see how many starters we get because we're ready to go green. See how many finishes and who's going to be standing tall. Burke out with a ripper at the moment, but it's the 32 that's going to knock on his door early. Here we come. They are thick and heavy into that turn. They're trying to sort his other out. Cameron there, the 23, 22 machine, putting on some extra effort, putting on a spin up the wall. Oh, and we've got chaos further back in the pack. We stay green, though. There's McDonald is on the outside of Berkeley. This side by side for the lead in the Cattle Cup. Look at Ed Mac rip the top. The Lindmack Automotive 32 goes to the lead. And Berkeley will have to get his skates on. All right, this could end in cheers or tears one way or the other. Is uh, Burkhart playing the hand here and thinking that I'll follow him for a bit? We've got plenty of time turning to go on. Plenty of laps to cut. Let's see what's happening. Another go for Burkhart. He's going to stay in check with him. The five machine now under the pressure of story and story. But we've got plenty of laps left to unfold. Is it enough for the race leader to maintain all the way to the next check and flag? Yeah, McDonald leads under heavy pressure from Joel Berkeley here. Back to Ken Menzies in third as Roberts gets the concrete in a massive way on the main straightaway. We go yellow because the Jacks tire and auto number 18 has absolutely clobbered the concrete. And Andrew Roberts has come to a premature halt in the feature race. An absolutely rampant start out there. But a frantic opening couple of laps. McDonald absolutely sailed it on the top side and went right around the outside of Berkeley. And that all of a sudden flicked the switch and said, we are on here, boys. Game on. McDonald v. Berkeley. Toowoomba versus Maryborough. And the General versus the Henry. Doesn't get any better than that in modified sedans. Oh, we absolutely like every represented factory out there but uh it's a ford and holden showdown but uh obviously some different motors getting tuned out there and they're going to turn some wheels but uh we're going to get heavy again looks like the 19's going to rejoin us there so that's good to see so mcdonald <laughs> it's amazing he's... that he rejoined that was a monster hit there i'm worried about the 32 the old mcdonald he's going to take the farm and all the rest of the uh, the horses because he's going to need some ponies in the paddock for this one that Burkhart machine looks like the uh, it's singing along there. Good old the Falcon there in second place. Yes, and it looks as though Roberts has chosen to retire the vehicle. So Berkeley in the Leicester Motorsport 59. What can he do about Nathan McDonald? Lights are out. We are back on the way in the NRG Industrial Cattle Cup. And Berkeley goes right with your leader here. Goes to the top side this time, and Berkeley tries to return serve. Side by side through turns one and two, and goes around the outside of Nathan McDonald. Berkeley to the lead here as Menzies tries to buy in as well. Right, oh, they keep going on, but McDonald doesn't want to see this one. Lead exhausted. He wants to stay in check with Berkeley, but he's going to bring that five machine and the two Cameron motors behind him. They are still tail the nose they gave each other a little bit of brotherly love but i tell you what at that rate of knots that can come unglued pretty quickly who's the tail on the 23 there starting to put a bit more heat in the kitchen there as well 
Yeah, ripping battles developing here as Jack Cameron tries to go upstairs on his brother Mason. Can't make the move. And the 26 oh, stays there as Severs is around. Brady Roberts left with nowhere to go. And the Mackay 56 facing the wrong direction in turn four. Second. Then Kent Menzies. And then the Rocky boys. Mason and Jack Cameron in fourth and fifth instrumental in putting this event together this weekend and Jack Cameron has worked overtime along with the McCosco Rocky Speedway Club to make this new racing surface what it is it has been spectacular tonight the last two restarts we've seen outside passes for the lead has McDonald got something to throw at Joel Berkeley here set to go back green here with 24 to run Right, oh, they get back to business. There we go. Menzies trying to make a point there. That third car ready to rock there in three position, number five. But it is the 59 of Burkhart. He is lighting it up at the moment. He wants to get away as clearly as he can. He knows what happens when he gets tangling with McDonald, and he wants to stay out of that harmful misconnection. But it's the uh, Cameron boys that are really putting it on. They are keeping the rest of the field at bay and honest at the moment the pace is strong all the way but Burkhart leading away and starting to put a little bit of lead but McDonald trying to go with him to stay in check yeah this time around Nathan McDonald has found a line that works for him he is going with Joel Berkeley Menzies Cameron Cameron and Atkin all battling for third fourth fifth and sixth as Miles Gilroy tries to buy in now as well but the battles for the Miners, is impressive at the moment as Menzies possibly starting to fall back into the clutches of Mason Cameron and Jack Cameron here. And Tim Atkin tries to buy in now on the low line in the number 23. The 23, I thought he was starting to build him a bit of momentum there with uh, Anderson, but it seems to be he's come a little bit unglued at the moment. I'm watching the battle, trying to close up. McDonald's got a bit of work to do. Menzies still throwing it down. The Cameron boys still making a little bit of contact and Edison on the 23 he has got some clear track but he can't quite peg the Cameron boys in front of him so the 59 of Burkhart the Ford singing on charging hard at the moment McDonald not part of the picture just yet but we're starting to wind down the closing laps here we go Cameron what's happened yeah big dramas there for Mason Cameron got over the cushion and Possibly something failing on the right-hand side of the car. And then big contact with the Bowen engine centre number 75 of Miles Gilroy breaking the left front of the Mason Cameron VS Commodore. The night. I don't know. Yes, once we get back underway, 14 laps left on the counter here. So we're halfway home in this one. Berkeley, McDonald, Menzies, your top three, but they've diced... It and sliced and the car mixed number, up. Car number 26, mate, uh, actually broke the steering and the steering wheel's just going around and around. The actual knuckle that joins onto the rack is actually broken. Thank you very much, Terry. Good to hear that Mason was able to make it out of the car and A-OK. -okay. A very frightening incident there with no steering as we are back underway here. And McDonald that time completely missed the start and Berkeley got a ripping jump. Menzies downstairs as Jack Cameron looks upstairs in fourth position. There we go, a bit of nonsense going on behind him. So the Cameron car of the 22 wants to get back here because they close up. That close up very quickly. I'm not sure what's going on with Berkeley, but McDonald is putting on a red hot charge here. This could be uh, the turning point of the night. Let's see what that one unfolds with. But it's Menzies safe in third, but not out of the danger. The 22 of Cameron really putting a bumper slide on him there at the minute. But Berkeley, he knows McDonald's all over him. It's going to be ready to make an impression. Yeah, Berkeley, McDonald, the action for the lead at the moment. Back to Menzies, sir. Jack Cameron fourth. Tim Atkin runs fifth as we're all stacked up on the back straightaway here. And Brady Roberts around. Severs around. And those two cars have come together once again on the opposite side of the venue to where they last met. Let's see if they can get going under their own steam because this is what we want to get. It's pole shuffles, to... Kev, that the Berkeley machine, the Leicester Motorsport car has so much poke and so much torque down low. And the Falcon really snapped away from all the Commodores it was up against in the pole shuffle. So 
depending where the torque curve is and where these cars make their power in the rev ranges, Jack Cameron waiting to rejoin the field. Looks like he's got a little bit of lump and a bump going on there, so he's not quite uh, perfect for the car at the moment, so not sure what he's picked up there on that infield. And Brady Roberts waiting to rejoin the field as well. We're just going to get these cars sorted here and possibly some drama here for the Jack Cameron machine. Well, he will retake his position in P4. Might have just been caught out of sorts. Lights are still flashing amber here at the venue as we wait for Brady Roberts to just drag the brake pedal and park the number 18 in the appropriate position. $2,000 on the line with thanks to the wonderful team at NRG Industrial. Thank you so much for your support of this event. I hope it becomes an annual thing here at McCosker Rocky Speedway because this <laughs> weekend has been wonderful. We will look at Tangles and Darren Severs arguing over starting position. You know, at this time of the night, the Chief Steward's patience will be as thin as a tally-ho paper. Well, that means the lights are out, so I hope they've got it sort of pretty, but Severs is not backing this one down. So Roberts trying to marshal up. They're going to say, all right, let's split the hairs and let's keep it even. But here we go, ready for the restart. Let's see you get the jump. And we're back underway with 12 to run in the Cattle Cup. We once again see Berkeley get that impressive jump as McDonald, Menzies, and Jack Cameron set about working their way towards the front of the field. Jack Cameron looking good on the back bumper of Menzies as Atkin buys in as well. Looking a little further back in the pack. Jorgensen tries upstairs, but the battle for the lead and the battle for third is on. It's here. We want to swing hard and swing all the way. But it's Menzies under siege here. Cameron trying to finally get a bit of work on. But that McDonald car's quick around the outside. He makes a lunge for the lead. Berkeley, can he hold him out with that position? Another one in the fence. Oh. The uh, 25 will bring us to the stop. But the race lead, I think, would be back to McDonald. So this time around, we're going to see the restart in the hands of the 32 machine of McDonald. Check of the timing says... Berkeley will be in the lead of the restart. So, oh, did everything inside. right. He's pulled to the infield to speak with an official. Jorgensen facing the wrong way. And the crowd was on their feet in the grandstand here, I know. We're being a little bit naughty at the time of the night that we are. But Jorgensen facing the wrong way. As Berkeley discussing going things. On. But it is Berkeley in the 59. Look at him playing the games here. He had the opportunity. Berkeley, he's going to have to be on his toes. McDonald is very hungry for this one. Yes, and the Chief Steward's patience will not extend very far. $2,000 on the line. So this is super critical on the restart. We saw McDonald go back around the outside of Joel Berkeley. As there's six laps left on the counter here. And the Chief Steward will have steam coming out of his ears right now. As we wait to confirm the restart order. And if they're not careful, both of them will end up on the infield parked with a black flag beside their name. Especially at this time of the night. So waiting to confirm the restart order. And it will be Berkeley in the 59. McDonald behind him. Menzies, Cameron, and Tim Atkin, your top five, with six laps left on the counter. And $2,000 on the line here. With Let's deal with a bit of crazy. They're still doing it. Let's see how this one. Oh, my goodness. The lights are out. And we're going to go green here. The, the yellow's no, come back on. I think the officials have said that. Put the foot down. It's the 59 that should be taking the charge here. Well, that is a turn up for the books. I wouldn't have had it that way. And we are still going to argue. I reckon there's about 30 seconds before a black flag comes through that fence and parks them both on the infield. This is silly stuff from the boys at the front of the field. Berkeley, McDonald, Menzies, Jack Cameron and Tim Atkin as the Ambers are still flashing here. I was thinking that 23, Vacker was a bit of a smile and assassin there. He's uh, 
He's got a fast car, but he's been showing it through the heats during the night, but he just can't put it on the track at the moment. But Cameron, a very tough competitor in front of me, just won't let the door they, open for him. They've just shown the black flag to McDonald. It's just come out the fence and flashed to the, the Q32. So black flag has been shown. <gasps> no. As the lights go out here, unless there was a warning flag, possibly black with the white stripe through it, a caution flag to the driver for indiscretion. Six to run here. And the Cattle Cup is back underway. Look at Menzi try to light it up here. He wants a bit of the action too. Menzi starring in at second place at the moment, but it's the one of Berkeley. He wants to put this one on. Berkeley putting the numbers on the 59, heavy and hard. He goes a little bit side on the turn. Here comes McDonald. He's got some speed out of that 32 machine. Yes, there is drama here to play out. Look at Tim Atkin go to the inside of Jack Cameron. He moves through to position four as Cameron tries to fight back on the inside. There's four to run. McDonald's still coming. Well, we know where he likes the part of the track to try and really make the inroads, but he's not quite there in the Harrows at the moment. So the 59 wheeling the good wheel and keeping the Commodore out in front at the moment. The Ford Barra, I should say, out in front is Berkeley and putting numbers on the board. McDonald's doesn't seem to have the response at the moment. Maybe the 59's been playing a little bit of cat and mouse. Berkeley goes back to the bottom that time and McDonald started to reel him in as we wind through the laps. This one is not over and done with yet. The Leicester Motorsport number 59 and the Lindmark Automotive number 32 to battle it out here in the Cattle Cup for NRG Industrial. Through three and four here, it's Berkeley and McDonald. Menzies third, Atkin fourth, Jack Cameron fifth. White flag is out and there's one to run for Joel Berkeley in the number 59 from Brisbane. McDonald to the inside, locked down on the bottom. One last throw of the dice. Berkeley sails it through three and four. And in the Leicester Motorsport, number 59, a late nomination. Joel Berkeley just gets the win. Menzi spins in the last corner. Atkin home in third. Jack Cameron will not make the check and flag. A frantic finish, but a late nomination in the Leicester Motorsport number 59. He wins the $2,000 win NRG Industrial. Cattle Cup for modified sedans. Rockhampton Speedway. Can I have some noise for Joel Berkeley? Berkeley will get the checkered flag here and roll around for a victory lap. McDonald, a ripping drive in second. Make some noise for Nathan McDonald and make some noise for your winner of the Cattle Cup, Joel Berkeley. Tim Atkins home in third. Brad Stein home in fourth position. And Brady Roberts home in fifth. And Jess and Dean down the infield rallying the troops for our modified... Yes, that was me, Jess. You guys have done a ripping job this weekend as well. Full hats off to the whole entire crew here from Makoska Rocky Speedway as our drivers are making their way to you, Terry. Rightio, and in third place, Tim Atkins. Absolutely ripper drive. Tim heads himself over here. That is one ripper trophy and a better to go with it, mate. You couldn't match those uh, front two, but you were putting on a good show. No, we were just hanging in there. Um, bit unlucky for Kent to loop it on the last lap, but uh, we'll take it. Um, we haven't had a very good run of late, so yeah, big thanks to Jeff and Beck, all the crew. Um, everyone just helps out. Amy and Clayton at home uh, couldn't come up this weekend, but yeah, it's a good result for our team. Absolutely, stale drive and jump off on the podium, mate, and we can get a photo there with you up, up there. That'd be fantastic. And in second spot, Nathan McDonald, chatting to him earlier on in the night. It's becoming a regular thing. We, it's, whatever it's got a steering wheel, he can drive it. Nathan, what a drive. You challenged Berkeley the whole way. Great racing, mate. 
Yeah, I've, I'm wrapped with that. Um, yeah, I'm a bit spacious. Like the track was um, really rough, but you know, you really had to get up on the wheel. And credit to Joel to race side by side of that with two wheels in the air and not touch. Um, huge respect to him. Um, so yeah, we struggled. We're, I was losing the clutch in that car. We probably had five laps left in it, so I'm, I'm glad I did finish. Um, and yeah. Good on the Rocky Club for putting on a big show. Dad and Lex for helping me in the pits. Wouldn't have come here without them getting the car ready. Um, everyone that cheers me on the crowd and back at home. Um, yeah, and all the sponsors. Thanks a lot. Absolutely fantastic drive. Jump up on the podium there, mate. And in the number one spot, first drive of that car tonight, Joel Berkeley heads on over. He's uh, normally steering a production sedan. And he's uh, stepped himself up to a modified, and mate, uh, you certainly uh, had to work for that one. He wasn't going to hand it to you. Yeah, um, well, that first start, Nathan drove around me, and then he put, I played catfish on the bottom, and then he did, and then I did at the end there, and then I guess we got lucky with that yellow, and um, yeah, I was ha happy to walk away with it, but it was a cool race with Nathan. It's an um, awesome race with people that have a lot of respect out here. It's, um, Good in modifieds, unlike some other divisions are these days, but it is what it is, so it's good to be here. And uh, driving a borrowed car, mate, um, that seemed to be a good deal for you? <laughs> yeah, um, obviously last minute plan with um, Dubbo getting cancelled and everything like that, but um, can't, can't thank Darren, um, Sarah, Ethan, Lex, um, Stroudy, everyone that's helped out this weekend. Um, yeah, it's um, ma massive credit to them and um, to do it off the back, it's even cooler. Absolutely fantastic, mate. Jump off that podium and we can get the official photos done. Once again, big thanks to uh, NRG Industrial Propriety Limited for coming on board for the Cattlemen's Cup. And wow, what a podium. Give them a round of applause, folks. Most people have had it off and there's a few at the bar, but that's fantastic to see, Joe. Yes, thank you, Terry. And a wonderful evening, a wonderful event, and a wonderful season comes to a close here at McCoskey Rocky Speedway. If you are heading home, please drive safely. On behalf of Kevin, Terry and Brandon Hoff, the crew here at McCosker Rocky Speed by Daniel Pierce, the president, thank you very much for your patronage this evening. We cannot wait to see you back here when the next season commences for McCosker Rocky Speedway in September next year. <laughs>